In today's video, I want to test the 5 gigabit USB-C Ethernet adapter from Sabrent. USB Ethernet adapters come in a variety of speeds, such as 1 gigabit or 2.5 gigabit. Or if you have Thunderbolt, you can get a 10 gigabit Thunderbolt adapter, but they can be really pricey. Recently, I ran across the Sabrent 5 gigabit adapter, which sells for much less and seems to be a good compromise between price and performance. If you want to know more about this device and see if it'll perform as expected, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe and hit the notifications icon so you'll be notified when there's new content. One reason this caught my attention was that I was looking for a fast Ethernet adapter that I could use with either of my laptops or possibly a docking station. As fast as Wi-Fi 6 is, it's still not ideal for video editing, so I wanted to get something with a little bit better performance. I have a couple of 1 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit USB adapters that work really well, but when I saw this I had hopes that it would be fast enough to use without resorting to a, the expensive 10 gigabit adapter. Before we get into testing, let's look at what you get in the box and just briefly go over the specs of the device. As you can see, you don't get much in the box other than the device itself, and you get two cables. One USB-C to USB-C cable, and one USB-C to USB-A cable, since this device is actually compatible with either one of the ports. The device itself is pretty simple. You just get an RJ45 jack on the back end, and a USB-C connector on the other end. There aren't too many devices in this particular category, and if I compare this device to the QNAP QNA UC5G1T with almost identical specs, we can see the size difference between the two devices. Though the proportions are a bit different, the overall dimensions are pretty close to the same when it comes to carrying it around, with one being a little bit wider and one being a little bit thicker. As for the construction and the design, the Sabrent does appear to have a better heatsink which should help with heat dissipation as my QNAP did run a bit warm. But overall quality seems a bit better on the QNAP. Spec wise, if we look at the chart, the devices are pretty similar with each using the same chipset. So for all practical purposes on paper, they're really the same. Though the Sabrent documentation says plug and play and that you don't need a driver, I only found that to be true on my MacBook. However, on my Razer laptop running Windows 11, it did require me to install the drivers before the device was recognized. Not a huge deal, and once the driver was installed, everything worked great. Now that everything is installed and recognized, let's run some performance tests using both my MacBook Air and my Windows Razer laptop. To provide a point of reference, I'm going to run the same tests on the QNAP 5 gigabit adapter to see if there's any performance differences between the two. As you can see from the first test used in my MacBook M1, performance is about even. I ran this test several times and sometimes the QNAP was slightly faster and other runs the Sabrent was slightly faster. It's pretty safe to say that the performance is pretty comparable between these two devices when you're running on the M1. Running the same test on my Razer laptop, we see a slightly different picture, with the performance edge going to the Sabrent unit. I also ran this test several times on the PC, and the results were pretty consistent, favoring the Sabrent unit. The last test I did was a file copy test using my Windows laptop, and here you can see a larger difference in performance. File copy on the PC showed up the largest difference between these two devices and favored the Sabrent unit. I really can't explain why there's a difference between the QNAP and Sabrent units on the PC as the hardware is almost identical, but both devices perform about the same on the M1. Many items rarely perform at their rated maximum speed, especially in networking, but overall I'm really pleased with this, and it'll do what I need to do. All the testing was done through a 10 gigabit network switch, so none of the tests were hindered by the speed of the network. After using this device for a while and copying a lot of data, it did warm up much like the QNAP unit did. And I also tested this on my Thunderbolt 3 docking station with both my Razer and the M1 laptop, and it worked perfectly with either, making this an ideal setup for a mobile desktop configuration. In my particular situation, I'm planning to attach my docking station to my 4K TV in the living room and the bedroom, so I'm able to do some rough edits when I don't want to be in the office. 
Just to make sure that this device was on par with the QNAP device, I did plug it into a QNAP NAS unit to see if it could be used for that function, and, and it was detected correctly. As I'm not going to use it that way, I didn't run any comparison speed test, but it was detected the way it was supposed to, and as expected, because it's the same chipset in both devices. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please give it a like. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll know when there's new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.